Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Mount Cory United Methodist Church. I'm Mike Noggle, the pastor here, and I'm welcoming all of you here today on this Father's Day, special Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers and grandfathers and father figures out here. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful day. And I want to thank all of the people who are joining us online who are joining us this morning. We thank you for choosing us to spend your time with, and we hope that you are blessed by our service and uh, certainly wish all the fathers who are watching online a happy Father's Day as well. A uh, couple of announcements that I want to share with you uh, before we get started with service this morning. Uh, next Saturday, uh, that's uh, June 26 at 11 o'clock over at Pleasant View. For those of you who know the Barnett family, uh, Marcus uh, Barnett had passed away in November, but that was the middle of the COVID and so on, so they couldn't have anything at that time. They are planning a celebration of life service for Marcus Barnett next Saturday morning at 11 o'clock over at Pleasant View uh, with luncheon to follow. So if you, any of you know him or know the family and would like to come over, uh, that will be next Saturday. Two weeks from today, a uh, special day, not only is it the 4th of July, uh, but we are also going to have a special celebration. Uh, we are going to have an outdoor 4th of July service over at the community park. It's going to be a joint service between the two services, or two churches together. It'll be at 10 o'clock over at the community park, and it'll be something special, something different, and we hope you enjoy it, and it'll be a good time to be out in uh, God's nature and thanking Him for uh, the blessings He has given us in this nation. And um, we will be in the shelter house. Now, you have two weeks to pray to make sure that we're in the shelter house, because if you don't pray for two weeks and we aren't in the shelter house, that means it's raining and your prayers didn't work very well. And I'm going to have to talk to somebody about that. And uh, there, there is the community building right next door that we'll, we'll go into if need be. But hopefully that isn't the case. Yeah, bring your lawn chairs. And, and if, you, if it looks like it's going to be warm, you might want to bring some water or something along as well. But uh, we hope to have a good time. But because that is the first Sunday of the month, and it's going to be over there, we're going to have communion on the second Sunday, July, June, July 11th here. Uh, so communion will be just pushed back a week so we don't have to uh, deal with communion over at the park. It'll be here on July uh, 11th. Also, you may have noticed in addition to the regular collection basket in the back, this is the third Sunday of the month, and we have a noisy change collection. So if you have any change floating around in your pocket, in your purse, or in your car, uh, you can donate it into the uh, offering basket there. And that goes to the Hancock County Religious Education uh, donation from this church. So uh, we ask you to do that. Are there any other announcements? Uh, yes, Jean. The Gospel according to Dr. Seuss in Sunday school starting next Sunday downstairs, downstairs. at 9.30, right? 9.30, yes. So, so all of you that are listening at home and have kids, bring them here at 9.30 next, next Sunday. Oh, so adults are going to show up? Okay. That's all right. You might learn something, TC. There you go. Any other... Any other announcements? I do know that there's a couple of things. Uh, Abby Broadman, Patty's daughter, is having a birthday today. So if you happen to run into her, see her, or shoot her an email or a text or something, wish Abby a happy birthday today. And on Tuesday, uh, the 22nd, TJ Washer is going to turn 22 on the 22nd. And that's an important birthday for him because... Well, it's, it's one that he might not have had, and so given, given his accident last July. So we're so thankful that he's having this one and hope he has many, many more because he's doing great. Uh, so wish uh, TJ a happy birthday, if you will. If there, yes, Harold. This Wednesday, so that'd be the 23rd and 43rd. Congratulations. <laughs> Tammy told me it only seemed like 50, but... Uh, <laughs> so that's not too bad. Yeah, that's, that's very good. 
Uh, I want to welcome our guests here this morning. Thank you for coming. We hope you come back. And um, Nancy, will you prepare our hearts and minds for worship? Thank you, Nancy. Come, bless the Lord with me. For the Lord is like a father to his children, compassionate and merciful, filled with endless love. He forgives our sins and heals the sickness inside us. He surrounds us with love and mercy and fills our lives with good things. Let's worship God together. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that you are with us, for you know us, love us, and care for us. May we learn to rest in your care and to lean on you as we go through this life. May we know your peace in the chaos, your truth in the challenge, and your hope in the hardship. Amen. Our praise hymns this morning can be found on page 144, This Is My Father's World, and then also 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. If you're able, you may stand and join us in song.
Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. You sound wonderful this morning. It's the time of our worship that we go to the Lord with our joys and our concerns. Obviously, we're going to be praying this morning for uh, blessing on our fathers and grandfathers and father figures uh, here in this congregation and beyond, and also for those who uh, do not have their fathers with them this morning. Uh, a couple others, of course, uh, we're so glad John's here with us, and we continue to pray for John Kuntz and his uh, recovery. I'm told that uh, Colby Sherrick, who we've been praying for, um, little girl down in Cincinnati, is in the hospital now for her 37th straight day, and still don't have everything figured out how uh, she's getting along. I uh, have some good news to report on uh, Ryan Fackler got home. I think it was Wednesday, it's either Tuesday or Wednesday, he got home. Uh, he had, was in the hospital for a couple of days with some GI issues, and um, I believe by now he is feeling somewhat better. And Marilyn Weimer, who had been uh, in Mennonite home for a rehab assignment, uh, got home yesterday. Uh, so she's now home and uh, uh, recovering further there. Uh, I also know that um, uh, Brian Gregorowitz and the uh, Boy Scout Troop 30 uh, that was on their trip to Florida should be returning uh, either today or tomorrow, so we ask for continued travel mercies for them. Uh, do we have other joys and concerns that we need to bring to the Lord this morning? Patty. Okay. Duly noted. Any others? Yes, Bob. surgery, uh, the opportunity to participate in that, uh, and that'll take place on uh, July 7th. Uh, my stepdaughter uh, has experienced some nausea from her treatments, but otherwise says she's feeling well. So, Very good. So that's uh, TNB, uh, you? Bowie. 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 I always get that wrong. Uh, TN Bowie and, and Gina uh, Gillespie. And those are Bob's um, son-in-law and stepdaughter. So we continue to pray for them. Are there others? Sure. Pastor Ben is home doing well and is preaching today. Yes, thank you. Uh, I did get that word. Uh, tomorrow, uh, next Sunday is his last Sunday before retirement, and he's so much wanted to be with his congregation over at New Hope United Methodist in Rawson. Uh, these last uh, two Sundays that he was there, and he's going to be there. He might, I was told that he might be sitting in a chair next to the pulpit, but he's going to be there. So, <laughs> so uh, we're grateful for his uh, improved health. Um, and I know he has a long way to go, uh, but we're, we're grateful to God for the mercies in his life. Any others? All right. Will you please join with me uh, with our prayer hymn? which can be found on page 393, Spirit of the Living God.
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning so grateful for the fathers and grandfathers and father figures that you have put into our lives. We thank you for their sacrifices and their example. We pray for those whose fathers have gone on to be with you and we uh, thank you for their lives and we cherish their memory and we know that you are taking care of them yet this morning. We know that you are a God who loves us very much. That you care for us and you listen to our prayers and you answer them. And we have been praying for a number of people for so long. And we've seen improvement in the lives of Ryan Fackler and Marilyn Weimer and Jim Motter and Pastor Ben Lowell. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the presence you continue to have in the lives of Gina Gillespie and Tien Bio. We thank you. Be with Tien as he goes through this experimental surgery. And if it is your will, we just ask that it be successful in this cancer that he has been fighting. He has beaten back. We thank you for being with the Boy Scout troop as they've been on their trip to Florida. And we ask you to continue to be with them as they travel home. Bless them with travel mercies this morning. We thank you for your presence and your ability to answer our prayers when we lift up John Coons and Colby Sherrick and we just ask that as they go through their health struggles that you are with them and you have your arms around them, that they know your presence in a special way and if it be your will that you restore them to fully to health. Lord, we have so many people in our bulletin that we have listed and we've been praying for many of them for a very long time. And the prayers have been needed. We know that you are aware of each of those situations and we trust you to take care of them. And we know that you will touch each of them in a special way. There are also unspoken requests this morning that we want to lift up both here in the congregation and those who may be joining online who have them on their hearts. We Take a moment to lift those up to you at this time. Lord, as we came into this sanctuary this morning, we deposited in the basket our tithes and offerings, and we also put our change in the noisy change collection. We just ask you to bless each of those offerings. Help the Hancock Religious Education Organization to reach out into the schools and reach young people in your name. And help us be wise and proper stewards of the funds that you, we present to your church. That they may be blessed, that they may be multiplied, and they may be used in the most appropriate way to further your kingdom here in this congregation and in this community. We thank you for new life and we thank you for marriages that have stood the test of time. I ask a blessing on Harold and Tammy. I'm so thankful for Abby and TJ as they celebrate birthdays in these days. And we're thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that you would love us that much, that you would send your one and only son as a sacrifice 
so that we could have the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take that gift for granted. And it is in the name of that Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> The scripture lesson today is taking from Matthew 11, 25 through 27, Romans 8, 13 through 17, 2 Corinthians 6, chapter 6, verses 16b through 18. At the time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to, re to reveal him. Romans 8, 13 through 17. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. 2 Corinthians verses, er, chapter 6, 16b through 18. God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean things, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Thank you, Sue, and may God bless the reading of his word this morning. And thank you, Patty, for your valiant effort to be ready, <laughs> even if we didn't. You do that. Uh, do that. Uh, I uh, missed one thing when I was <clears throat> talking about our joys and concerns. Um, and this is a silly thing for me to miss because it involves myself. It's a praise, and it's appropriate that I bring it to you on Father's Day. 
And that is, uh, come November, my daughter Kelsey is going to have my second grandchild, uh, we found out. So it's a, that's a big praise uh, that uh, will be grandfather once again. And hopefully, uh, the, with the pandemic subsiding, I'll get to see this one a little bit more frequently earlier on than I did the, the, the first one. Will you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this is the final Sunday of a sermon series that we've titled, And God Made Man. And it's appropriate that we would conclude this sermon series on this day, this Father's Day, as God created men and thus created fathers. In Genesis 1.26, it said, God said, Let's, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. And, and he did. But while often we get conflated, we have our earthly fathers and our God, our heavenly father, and too often times they get confused. That there are similarities, but there are some great differences. Now, obviously, Father's Day is set aside to honor our earthly fathers, to express our love and thanks for all that they've done for us, their sacrifices, that all that they have worked hard to provide for us and care for us and love us and support us, and it's appropriate that we do so. On the desk at the parsonage, uh, my daughter had given me a couple years ago, one, I think it was my oldest daughter actually, uh, a little uh, glass uh, paperweight that says, and any man can become a father, but it takes love to become a dad. And that it does. And for many of us whose dads are still with us, we are afforded that opportunity to say thank you and express that appreciation, and it can be a very special time. But for many others, this can be a tough day. For some, we have fathers who passed on, and they're not able to be here with us. And what we have is our memories of them. And it's especially tough for those whose uh, father has passed recently, like my son-in-law. For others, the complexities of human relationships don't match our simplistic Ozzy and Harriet world ideals of a man and a, a, a mom and a dad and children all happily coexisting under one roof. And it can be tough because some men spend the day filled with guilt over what they perceive as their failings or shortcomings as a father. And still other fathers spend the day alone as their children have moved on with their lives and the person who is their father is a part of their past that's left behind. And people also struggle whose fathers have been absent. And it may have just been an issue of priorities that they just weren't around. And yet both have hurt feelings, and those feelings are real. Some of you may recall back in 1974, a great singer-songwriter, Harry Chapin, wrote a song called Cats in the Cradle that kind of wrapped up this kind of thought of two ships just kind of missing connections. I won't read all the lyrics, but I'll read some. And it starts out talking about a child being born, and then it ends up with the father being retired. It says, my child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. And he learned to walk while I was away. And I was, he was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. The little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when, but uh, we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. And as the following verses pass on, it goes through different stages of life till it gets to the last verse when it says, I've long since retired, my son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. 
He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids got the flu, but it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me he had grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Some people find the day hard because of negative experiences with their earthly father due to abuse, neglect, judgmentalism, or other factors. And it results in deep pain, hurt, and insecurities that are genuine and real and can last a lifetime. Then when we talk about a heavenly father, it's no wonder that people have a hard time grasping the concept of a loving God as Father. Instead, he's often seen as this angry, judgmental, absent, uncaring figure watching over us all. You see, we tend to project our expectations and our experiences of what a father should be or has been onto God as our Heavenly Father. And as such, God's character is often tainted by the weaknesses of human fathers. See, the truth is we all have biological fathers. We also know that Scripture tells us that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God And that includes fathers. To expect perfection, either a child expecting perfection of their father or fathers expecting perfection of themselves is an unrealistic expectation. All of us, whether we be fathers or we be children, both sides, we want the hurts and insecurities and the bitterness and resentments and anger to be erased. So how can we do that? Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15 tells us, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. I'm here today to tell you, folks, reconciliation is possible, and today is a good day for that to start. If you're a father who needs to ask forgiveness, today's the day to ask for it. If you're a child who needs to forgive a father, today's the day to do it. Now, maybe that father won't be receptive to your offer of forgiveness, but at least you've gotten it off of your chest, and it's in God's hands now. See, We look at God not as an actual human father that shares some similarities to earthly dads. What we need to do is we need to see God as the actual literal father and that our earthly fathers have certain remote similarities to him. See, the essence of fatherhood is found in God, not in human beings. You want to understand what God is like? Don't look at your dad. Although many are fine Christian men doing the best they can. But look at what Jesus tells us in our text this morning from the Gospel of Matthew. It says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You want to see what God is like? Get to know the Son. You get to know Jesus. You know God. See, the image of an earthly father as a way of understanding God might be a good picture And sometimes it's an even clearer picture the better the dads do at their jobs, but it's still just a partial glimpse of something much, much bigger. We all have a physical life that we receive when we enter this world. God's plans are to offer all human beings 
the chance to experience an additional spiritual beginning that can result in eternal life in God's kingdom. Our worth can't come from our earthly fathers or from others. Our worth as a human being is only truly found in God, the source of truth and love. You see, we can be fully loved. We can be fully accepted. We can become full heirs of salvation. That's what we all want. So how? How do we do that? Some of you may recall my sermon late last summer called The Eternal Adoption. If you don't, you can go back. If you have any interest, it's still on our Facebook pages and on YouTube. See, God longs for a real relationship with us and offers to each of us to be our Father, especially to those who have experienced pain or have been abandoned from their earthly fathers. Romans 8, 14 to 16, that Sue read earlier, says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba being an Aramic word, which is similar to what we would use as daddy, a term of intimacy and endearment. It goes on to say, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Well, before we get there, God's making that offer to us. But we have to consent to the adoption to become his children. See, we are all created by God, but we're not all children of God until we consent to the adoption. God freely offers it to everyone, but how do we consent to the adoption? We do this by repentance, baptizing, and receiving God's Holy Spirit into our hearts. And then, when that happens, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and accept God as our Father, God tells us, I will live with you and walk among you, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see, we're not just servants of a master, although God is our master. We are sons and daughters of a loving father. Psalm 68, 5 tells us God is the father of the fatherless and protector of the widows. And Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven. Father means something. Many times in the New Testament, God's referred to as the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God is ready to bless each and every one of us. God gives us life. He loves us. He rewards our efforts. He communicates with us through his word. He allows us to communicate with him through prayer. He corrects us lovingly. He provides for our needs. He gives us wisdom. He always welcomes us back. 
and he desires to grant us many blessings, including the ultimate gift, the gift of eternal life in his family. So how did he show us that he loved us? Gospel tells us, and all of you know it, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son that whosoever should believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And not only that, he gave us a love letter that we can read over and over again to remember what he did. That love letter is that cross right there. Because every time that you look at that cross, you can read the words, my child, I love you this much. This much. So today, it is proper to honor our earthly fathers. Forgive them if necessary. But our focus, our focus needs to be on our Heavenly Father. Because He will never leave you, neglect you, or forsake you. Ever. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your example. Help us as men and fathers and grandfathers to follow that example and grow closer to you so that we can show that to others. And as children, we thank you for the fathers that you've given us. And if they weren't exactly what we were hoping for, help us to forgive where it needs to be forgiven. But Lord, help us to understand that it is in you that we find our worth and that you will always love us, always welcome us, and never, ever turn us away. Amen. Will you please turn to page 141, our closing hymn this morning, Children of the Heavenly Father, and if you are able, you may stand. Until we meet again, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.